Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Galactic Hood Buddha. My name is Miladies, your spirit shifter here, guiding you on your journey to a self-awareness. Thank you for being here on our next episode of Wisdom Wednesday. I'm telling you, I'm going to get some noise soon. Watch, don't worry about it. A DJ switchboard. Watch. Watch. Uh, so we are here and we are speaking with Miss Brandy Ferguson, who is an expert on mood disorders from personal experience as well as professional experience. And she has a couple of insights when it comes to those topics. Before that, don't forget to get your drum roll self care calendar. It's always up there for you to get yourself together day by day, picking whatever activity you like. Some days is 30, some days is 31. You already know February is 28, so don't play with me, okay? All right, so other than that, follow us all over the place at Galactic Hood Buddha, and thank you so much for tuning in. I love y'all. So, Brandy, Brandy, I met Brandy back in 1991, 1991. We was in the first grade, and I had moved from Spanish Harlem and I was speaking a bilingual. I was also one of those students that was going through the transition of getting glasses as well. So these glasses that you see right here, that many of you probably have not seen me until probably 2018. But anyways, that's another story. So this is our long-term friend who in our transition of friendship, I have seen her grow into the person that she's about to share with you guys today, including a two-time writing author, which is beautiful, um, putting her work out there since 2016, um, expressing whatever's going on up here to share it with us. And I think that's beautiful. In addition to something that is dear to my heart, because you guys know how much I love scents, she actually has a essential oil line to assist us with some of the mood disorders that we're going to speak about today. So I'm going to shut up. And I'm gonna have her come on. Go ahead, Brandy. Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Brandy, like my lovely sister over here said. Um, I have suffered from bipolar and anxiety, insomnia. Oh, the list goes on and on and on. But I'm pretty sure everyone suffers from something, right? Woof, woof, yes. right? Man, laundry list is what I call it. Yes, yes. Yes. So um I my story goes back to high school when I was diagnosed with bipolar. And um back then <clears throat> borderline personality was a thing. Mm. So we had uh we was like we <laughs> we talking about uh, borderline right. <laughs> I was diagnosed also with borderline personality disorder. And can which you tell a lot us a people, little bit what is borderline? Uh, yeah. I was gonna, yeah. As a lot of people think it's like split personality, which it, it isn't. It's more like people who have abandonment issues or um, struggle with relationships. Or in my case, um, it was abandonment issues, but it was also, um, I suffer with uh, self harm. Um, my moods was very extreme. Like I would go from happy, what well, people would want to say happy to angry in like five seconds. Mm -hmm. Everything was black and white. There was no in between. Um, I held on to one particular person. I wasn't really into having a lot of friends because I was attached to only like one specific person. If someone would leave me, I was devastated. So yeah, that's borderline. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people know more about bipolar. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the mania and the depression. You go through bouts of hypomania or um, mania, which can put you in the hospital. And then you can go into depression, which also could put you into the hospital. Mm -hmm. But I've been doing very well for a very long time now um, with the help of writing. Mm, can um, we get into that? Yes, the writing started when I was nine. I got my first uh, poem published at nine. I don't know if you remember when we had the little 
uh, in Mr. Wilder's class, I think it was, we had a little um, poetry event. And it went, yes, yes, yes. In the yeah. auditorium, right? Huh? Was it in an auditorium? I can't really remember. I know we had to write about a specific something. And I remember the poem that I wrote. It was about falcons. And I put it into the um, into some kind of, I don't know, some kind of contest. And it went into some kind of library. Some It's in some type of library right now, the poem. Oh, okay. So I thought that was pretty cool. And from there, I started to write more and more. And then in high school, that's where I took off. So, and um, yeah, that's where all my emotions, my everything went in a journal. My first hospitalization, the best thing a nurse ever gave me was a book <laughs> to now, write all my How feelings. important, yes, how important, I want to know why do you feel that it was important for you to write all your feelings down? What made you say that to yourself? Like what, because a lot of us have a problem speaking to somebody, writing it down, and we leave it on the side. So, like, what, what happened with you? Um, uh, talking to people wasn't in my, it, it just wasn't for me. I didn't really trust people. I trusted a pen and paper more than I trust to speak to someone because I always felt that no one was really listening. But if I wrote something and then I can reread it and I understood myself more. Mm -hmm. Sometimes- Self-awareness. Right, exactly. Um, sometimes I wouldn't reread re it. Mm -hmm. I would just close it and leave it alone uh, because I was I just wanted to write it out. And that was it, leave it alone. Not so even look back at it. Yeah. Just to get it out. Other times I would rip it up, you know, because it was just the emotion I wanted to get out. And then use the physical of tearing it up to feel something. You understand? Uh, let's hold that. Oh, I understand, because I like to do that. I also like to, I'm a fire sign, like a stellium fire. So I have Aries or like flaming. So I'm one like here, I don't know how it ha the alarm hasn't gone off because I do a little fire pit and I'm burning those feelings. <laughs> so I know what you're talking about, but guys be cautious about the fire though. Yeah, I, I wouldn't advise the fire. Nope. I, you know, <laughs> I did it up like she said, rip it up. Yeah, I did the tearing up. I did the balling up. Tearing up is more you feel it more, and then just balling it up. But it was very emotional. It was a relief. Um, it took place of other habits that I had that I didn't really need to keep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So releasing this and then putting it out on social media, when social media became a thing, mm -hmm. I realized other people felt the same. Nice. So it, it felt good to feel acknowledged and then, you know, to open up a little bit more because I was so closed in with just me reading my own stuff mm -hmm. and only to find out there's other people that are just like me. So before we get deeper into your writing, because I'm going to get back to that, I enjoy the fact that you just bump into these beautiful tips that we may not have to get at the end of the podcast because you are given the juicy part of how to self like how to do self-care right write things down put your feelings get it out of your system find a supportive group find like-minded people so you don't feel alone i think those are those are beautiful tips mm, come on girl thank you Thank you very much. It, it, we work hard for those. It takes years sometimes mm -hmm. to get where you have to get. It's 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 a long road sometimes, but you you get there. You always get there. So when it comes to the writing, I know you said high school. That's when the mood disorders started picking up for you, as well as the writing. So how did those two combine? Um, I had a tough high school. Year. School years were tough. Um, so I'll never forget my, my ninth grade English teacher. He started, uh, we had to write our bio autobiography and I took that to heart. <laughs> I really wrote my autobiography, <laughs> like everything, trauma, everything was on that paper and he found it. 
he found it. It wasn't meant to be given in. It was supposed to be really for me. It was a draft. And he found it. And he found it to be disturbing. So he <laughs> he gave it in and he helped me. And that's where all my help began and in and intervention and the writing began because of him. So he was kind of my push and my and he's still on my Facebook. I still keep in touch with him. That's so good. he's yeah, he's he's a really great mentor, I guess you could say. Wow. Um, yeah, he's the one who really uh, uh, promoted, I guess, my writing, you could say, like to keep me going, to not stop, because my writing tends to be on the darker side. Yeah, um, talking about that, we're going to talk about your first book since you want to get right into the, the actual name of it is our Dark Encounterment, right? Dark Encounters? Encounters, sorry, in 2016. So talk about darkness. What made you want to say, I'm going to publish this? Oh, my goodness. Oh, whew. Let alone, let's let's move back, because I know we didn't mention this. You are a mom of two. Yes, I am a mother of two. So a boy this and a girl. was published before or after? Where, where were the kids in between this? My son was four, and I was pregnant with my daughter. Okay, so this is when the book was being produced. Yes. Okay, come on. Yeah, so I was going to school. I was finishing up my associates at the same time. So I was doing quite a bit. Um, but those poems were written years and years and years ago. I just kept kept them collected in one spot until people just kept on asking me and asking me and asking me, when are you going to publish these poems? When are you going to write a book? When are you going to write a book? They just kept asking me and asking me. And then I had a tough time back in 2014 with my dad and then, you know, him passing in 2015. And then after he passed away, um, so many poems kept flooding through my mind. And then it was time to write a book. It was too many. <laughs> it was so many. And I just said, okay, I got with a publisher and so wait, how did we you, did. I, you know, yes, it could be a a zigzag process to get to publish a book. What was your process of actually looking for a publisher? Like, because I know it wasn't just like, well, like, yeah, tell me your process. I'm not going to come up with anything. Oh, um, I didn't look for her. She came for me. Okay. So somebody, um, so on Facebook, apparently I didn't know they had a, what are those called? Spam folders? Mm -hmm. Where you have like the other side of inboxing. Mm -hmm. So she inboxed me about maybe mm, six or seven months before I knew there was a, those things existed. I thought I lost my, my opportunity. <laughs> so I hit, I hit her back up and I'm like, oh my goodness, I didn't know you, you emailed me and I, I inboxed me and I was stuttering even in writing, because I didn't know what to say. I didn't know if it was real. I looked at her profile. She had all these books that was published from her. And I hit up the person who um, who mentioned me to her. And I was like, wow, thank you so much. And he was like, you know how long ago I told her about you? <laughs> I didn't know. But thank you so much, because I had so much going on. I didn't, I didn't know. And um, yeah, she... She took my writings and went off from there. The good thing about this part of your story is that synchronicity steps in, as well as honestly being authentic with yourself and putting yourself out there. Because prior to, right, people can just say that, as, oh, she published a book, it just came to her. But truth be told, you were, you had the, the poems years ago you brought it back to life, right? In addition to bringing it back to life, you started sharing it. People started asking. So now you have something to work with. It's just doing the little back and forth of believing in yourself and, and having the audience to build that. So that's, that's beautiful. So that was your first book. How did you feel about that? I was super excited. Plus I was pregnant. So it was a lot of emotions. Um, uh, everybody was super happy because he was asking for this book for so long. Um, by the way, it's on Amazon. You can find it. Yes, it is. If you look under, just type in the word baby love and you'll see both of the books. It's B-A-B-I-L-U-V. -B -B. Um, people always say baby love. It's, it's baby love. <laughs> so we um, we were excited. We, I always say we. I, I swear I have more than just me inside of me. 
I always said that we all have multiple <laughs> personalities, but don't get me to don't quote me on that because at the end of the day, I always express that we have to be multiple people at one time. You cannot be a a intimate lover to your sister. You cannot be an intimate lover to your kids. That goes for your husband and your wife. So therefore, you have to switch personalities and character when you're dealing with certain type of people. So I'm just saying you are that. correct. Go ahead. I'm just saying <laughs> my, my, my. <laughs> Oh, so um, I lost my pregnant. train of thought. She was pregnant with your I daughter. I was pregnant, right. Yeah. And um, promoting my book was, it was amazing. You know, with a big old belly. And promoting, hi, I got my first book. You know, would you like to buy it? You know, and then telling them the story behind it. And I think it was um, more about the story behind the book that people were, were willing to buy it because of the story behind it. I mean, you know. Who wouldn't? No, I'm saying. <laughs> but oh, the thing about it is that it's true. It's not what you're selling is what who selling. It's, yeah. Right. So I I think it went okay. And then, you know, I had so many poems I couldn't put in just that, you know, the one book, you know? And then I, I needed to see how that was gonna work out. And um I it went, I think it went okay. A lot of people were asking me after that, are you gonna write another one? Because I kept writing. I was still writing, even though that poem, that book came out, I was still writing. Um, but I did suffer a writer's block for quite a while, um, maybe a year, about a year. But there were so many poems that I had that I was still able to come up with another book, even with the poems on top of the year after. But it was um, 2018, I think I came out with the second one. Yes, and that one is Shadows of the Distorted Mind. Yes. That one came out in 2018, I believe. Mm -hmm. And that one, I like, to be honest, better than the first one. I mean, we all, but even if it's your work, we always have our preference because you got to give yourself the credit of knowing that you treat everything like as a child. You know, the first one is learning. The second one is learning how to walk. The third one is, you know what I mean? Kicking and doing all that other extra stuff. So you got to give yourself time. But the main important thing is that you try. You didn't let nobody stop you. And it truly comes from childhood, which is what I express to people all the time. All of our traits and talents and what we're good at comes from childhood. It just gets shut down. You didn't allow it to get shut down because you knew it was the way for an escape for your mind. Where other people keep it on inside and let it, you know, bring them down. Marinate. Yeah, let it marinate. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I, I could definitely relate to that. So here's you are two books, two kids, and depression and anxiety are still floating around, right? Mm, definitely. All right, and then you get into smells. Yes. How did you yes. get? It? What brought you to? Say, all right, I'm doing the journaling, I'm doing the speaking, I'm in groups, but I need something extra to give me a sense of balance. It was more uh, my insomnia. I have very bad insomnia. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken so many medications. I'm so tired. I was so tired taking the medications. Um, and I've been on medications for a very long time. And that's another reason why I've gotten into this, the, to the essential oils. Um, the whole insane side. Yes, I, it's a better way of saying it. Yes, <laughs> I can't take more, much more medications because I've been on it for so long, and my right, body's exactly. already so right. Exactly, it's it's like I'm done. We need to try something better, something better, something new. Um, so I started to experiment for a while. I've been doing it for a couple of years now, experimenting, and um. I did with a diffuser first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What did you do with a diffuser? Um, made my own do-it-yourself blends for anxiety and um, to help me to sleep. But then I found out that my husband wasn't a big fan, so I had to like take that out and make it into a roller, a roller for your wrists and your neck, and and put it in a roller blend. Uh -huh. So uh, that worked out very well for me. So uh, Who inspired I you some to get? Who inspired you or who like commented to you to get essential oils? Oh, first of all, you was one of my inspirations. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, 
I really, I know you came to me. You was like, here's some sprays. Happy birthday. Stop, stop, stop. And I'm like, give it to me. Give me it. Like, you know I'm a promoter. I'm like, go ahead. But wow, thank you. All right, all right. So I said, let me try it out a little some some. see what my sister's a little talking about. So, um, yeah, you definitely was. And then I started doing some reading. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just try a little something, something. So I was eating and having insomnia. So I said, well, we might as well make do with this insomnia. I started doing some research. So I started doing some research. I started looking up some blends, started looking up some... Uh, to look it up some oils to see what matches with what, what blends with what, what will work with what, what works for what. So I found one that worked well for my sleep. Um, not everyone likes CBD, but I do. Mm -hmm. uh, so it works well for me. It might not work well for everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, for my anxiety, um, the one that I made recently works well for me. Um, a customer that bought one recently, she liked it as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I'm doing, I'm, I'm going on the right path. <laughs> so when it comes to the CBD, what, 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 uh, what does it add to it that if you didn't have it in there, like what kick does it add? I, I think it adds a little bit more uh, relaxation. Yeah, I would okay. say, and it's long, more long lasting. Uh, without the CBD, I don't feel like it's as lasting mm -hmm. to me. For me, and that's Maybe. not THC. That's CBD. No, no. Yeah, it's just because a lot of people kind of like you know confused. I just want to make sure that people know that it is something that's you know natural. Is CBD yeah. is something that people use to roll on their body when they have their body. Uh, you know, coming out the gym, it's the ointment. It goes into a lot of things. Yeah. Yes, it does. I, I but you also do it without it, right? As well, you yes, both. Yes, okay. yes, I do. Of course, I do not put anything in my in my items that are not asked for. I this is my personal that I do for myself. Um, right. The uh, anxiety. That's the only way I put CBD is for my sleep. For me, my anxiety oils and uh, others. I don't put CBD even for myself. Got so, it. right. Um, but I also have sprays. So like I have the linen sprays that also work for me too, for sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, my husband's also not a big fan of that one either, but he doesn't know that I spray my sheets before he goes into the bed anyway. He doesn't, right. he doesn't know. Now he does. Right. Because guess who goes to sleep faster when I spray it on? <laughs> No, sometimes you just don't say nothing you just do it you know and let them come okay because his sinuses bother him so if it's bothering him he can't smell it so if he can't smell it he don't know but it still works somehow because he's still knocked out so somehow some way is getting through to you through your okay. pores some way is getting to you so yeah it's working uh the um I, I'm more of a big fan for myself is the rollers. I really like to smell it on my skin. Yes, I love I I, I yeah, roll the rolls on is easier, it's quicker. You can pop them on when you outside. Yeah. And especially when it comes to anxiety and, and also depression, which I like to clear up that depression from a I want to say spiritual perspective is a form of us going through the darkness right to get back to the light so it's like this space that we need to be so that it's like a reflection space for us it's a space to pull back right and then allow yourself to move forward with enlightenment i always find it to be an enlightened stage as long as we don't allow ourselves to stay there for a long period of time and that's where the journaling comes in that's where the groups comes in that's when the essential oils come in it talks about you trying every fucking thing that you can to keep you balanced because it's not necessarily about staying away from these emotions forever because truth be told when it comes to our subconscious mind it's always going to find a way to suck us in we just have to be prepared with the tools to be able to balance that out and essential oils i know for me it does because i'll be outside and maybe a lot of people and anxiety come in namaste and these and you know these items are to assist you know they don't replace anything you know you have to do the work yes. it's not something that you're just going to be like oh okay and then that's it 
You know, there's more to it. You have to have the positive thoughts. You have to be able to go through your day and not have any kind of negative energy to hit your way. You have to make sure you don't have no people next to you that's going to come and bother your energy and your space because that alone, just because you got the oil on, doesn't mean that everybody else is not going to come and. It's a force field. It's a force field. Right. <laughs> And I tell people that all the time. It's like, you know, yeah, we take the medicine, we take pills, but that's not going to help. I had the alarm. I'm sorry about that. No, it's no problem. So when it comes to where can, uh, so right now, what, where can we find your oils? I know your books are on Amazon, but your oils, where can we find those at? Um, I am on Etsy. Um, solarmiss.etsy.com. Spell it out for us. Oh, it's right there. Hat. Solar Miss, my bad. It's the name on. Y'all see that? For those of yeah. you on YouTube, for you on the podcast, go to YouTube. And and also, I'm on Google. So, um, yes. my shop is on Google, but it's called Solar Institute. Matter of fact, you know what I got for y'all right now? I have one here. Okay, just let's hold it up real quick. Okay, no, no, keep it up, keep it up. Okay, okay. Can you open it up for us? Let us see what it looks like. Oh, sure. This is the spray. Okay, so it's 30. Okay, we see that. And which spray is that one? This one is Vivacious Venus. Vivacious this is the one... Venus? Yes, this is the Love Potion spray. Oh, oh, I mean, we were talking about uh, anxiety, <laughs> but we ain't really you. Well, hold up. Self-love. <laughs> okay, self-love in the building. I didn't get that one. I'm about to get that one. So that's that one. And then this is one of the roll-ons. Okay. So they're both, it's the same, but roll-on and the spray? Yes. Awesome. Um, currently, okay. I don't have this one in roll-on yet. Currently. Okay. Um, but um, Earth to Anxiety, I'm just about to put this one on Etsy. Earth to Anxiety. The roll-on. How grounding does that sound? Wow. And that's the roll-on. Yes. Oh, this is one of my favorites, to be honest. <laughs> I really love this one. Ma'am, put it down. Ma'am, put it down. I know, right? Well, real quick, just real quick, just real quick. Yes. And so when it comes to that, it, are, can, can this be used on children as well? Yes, it is. It is not, is not potent to the point where you can't use it on children. You okay. Can. That's good. Because I know when it comes to the the anxiety with school and things like that. I know a lot of kids still from the pandemic are recovering from all this transition and things like that. So having the anxiety could be good to put in their book bag. It is. It, 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 you're right. It is. These kids, they do. They need extra stuff. My kids actually come and ask me for the sleep one. See? So, I mean... Because and the, the good thing about us as adults is that we're learning once again how to reparent ourselves and get ourselves that, to that way. And if we got children, it's good to add them to our journey so that honestly, they don't have to go through the same shit that we did. Um, And I feel like I'm doing a pretty damn good job. I, I went to the mamas. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Overall, yes. do you have anything that you want to leave us off with when it comes to uh, anxiety and depression and just dealing with your mood disorders? Uh, I would say therapy, talk therapy is always a great way to go. Uh, it's never too late, never too never too old, never too late. People always saying, oh, they don't want to talk to a stranger. Well, that stranger is someone you should always want to talk to because they can't, they won't judge you. They can't judge you. You leave your problems at that door and you leave them there. You know, people they, say they that, but to... can I say something? Sure. Stop at the corner store and you go for two months and you know the Ackman or the Dominican Poppy. After two months, you're telling them your business. So I just be wondering why people would be saying that. Not everyone, though. I don't find like, myself. Oh, how's your kids? You be like, oh, my kids, they bad. Yeah. How are you doing today? Work was fucked up. Like, you know, we do for our business. <laughs> I play. I mean, to an extent, you I are right. Know. But. No one's going to really go in there and be like, yeah, so last night I got a date rape, a date rape drug put in my in, in my cup, you know, like oh, something like that. why it's important to speak to people. Right. Or I haven't gotten out of bed in five days. You think the op is going to really say, hey, I haven't seen you in five days. What happened? Right. Not really. <laughs> 
So I think it would be beneficial, you know, to talk to a therapist if you can. Um, I always say, you know, I don't do it, but I should. Exercise is also always good to release that energy and toxins. I'm going to be an advocate because I am a 10-year influencer on fitness and, yes, exercise. Let me tell you something. I know it's an oxymoron. Don't ask me who made this up. But we get we don't get the energy to exercise, but we know that if we exercise, it gets us out the energy that we're in, the funk that we're in. So it's just like a circle of if you do it, if you don't, just do it. It's got to have the energy to do it. So that's, ten minutes that's is good enough. Time. I always feel like ten minutes is good enough, even if you're stretching. True. I I also in the morning I take at least five minutes before I get my kids ready because I have my alarm set five minutes, ten minutes after my kids get ready. They know what to do, and I take five minutes to myself. I go to the bathroom and I say a few words. I do my little breathing, and then I'm ready to go for the day. It ain't much. Just a few words, a few breaths. Thank you, I'm here today. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. I love it. I honestly really enjoy uh, the fact that you touch all the seven areas of life that I always talk about that is very important on this podcast is to make sure that we always bring a balance to our emotional state, our spiritual state, our uh, physical state, which you mentioned the physical exercise, which was good. You know, our environment, you really clearly stated that when you mentioned the essential oils that, yes, you can have that, you can have the therapist, but if you're surrounded by people who are getting you in that space, right, like you can't heal where you've been hurt at type of thing, then it's, it's, it's meant for you to clear up your surroundings as well. So what does that look like, you know? Um, you got to get rid of the weight that's weighing you down. I learned that the hard way. I got rid of a lot and, and placed boundaries. Oh my goodness, boundaries. I had to learn that so, I'm still learning about boundaries. Oh yeah. Family. This is another podcast because we, listen, this is going to be another podcast. We will definitely go back. I'll probably do like a group podcast on boundaries with a couple of people because honestly, I think we will not think, I know Earth is a less, Earth is a planet of lesson. Fight me if you will. I don't care. Earth is a planet to learn. Therefore, there's going to be lessons until we croak. Meaning that boundaries is one of those lessons that I think is a lifetime lesson because in one minute or another, you could put down your boundaries and get swindled. So it's it's a it's an ongoing and it's not something that you beat yourself up for like, oh, you know, damn, I should have never said that. Damn, I should have never did that. I should have did this. No, the should have. It just reminds you like tighten it up or loosen it up, right? If I can make an oil for boundaries to build it, like that, that electrically it, creates a barrier because it needs to be an oil that barrier, actually right? yeah. just, And then like someone comes and you just go like this and go. And then they touch it and they zip. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so awesome. We'll all be living a great life. <laughs> all, yes, all in the cause, all in the cause. <laughs> Healthy boundaries, you know. Big as that with good boundaries. Right, right. Oh man, that would be awesome. But yeah, definitely create great boundaries. Great, great boundaries, healthy boundaries, and you will live mentally a great life. Yes. Take a breath from that one. Take an inhale. Exhale. Oh man. This was beautiful. I just enjoy the fact that you came on here. Uh, put yourself out there and also really gave us from the inside point of view what it is to deal with this, these disorder, disorders and actually become aware of them and take self-accountability to do something about it with other people helping you out. That wrapped it up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, spirit. Oh, that yeah. was, that was <laughs> All right, y'all. So I love y'all so much. I'll catch you guys in the next podcast for Wisdom Wednesday. Don't forget to catch what's happening astrologically on Mommy and Coffee. It is always good to look at your natal chart and see where the planets are transiting because it is an uh, it is an astounding time on Earth. I'm just letting you know we are seeing energies that we have never seen in this lifetime. So buckle up. All right, I love y'all so much. Peace to the Middle East. <laughs>